Okay, what we're going to do is a fuel trim review, and uh, what we're going to cover is how fuel trim relates to a misfire. And there's a lot of debate in the field as to whether or not you can use your fuel trim numbers and determine the type of misfire that you have. And so what we've done is uh, we pulled up some scan data of a short-term, long-term fuel trim on an RX 300. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to disable the spark. <coughs> and um, with that type of misfire, you're going to have raw fuel running into the exhaust, um, not to mention the oxygen too that wasn't consumed. And then we're going to pull a fuel injector, disable the injector, and obviously it would be no fuel, just uh, outside or atmospheric air basically entering the exhaust. So we're going to compare the two and see what our data uh, looks like. I'm going to do the ignition misfire first. Okay, just unplug the coil. The injector is still firing. I think that's an important variable just to make sure the computer's not shutting the injector off. I can assure you that this fuel injector is still firing. Let's watch this number for a minute. Looks like we peaked at 10.9 and then it came back down as the computer adjusted the long term started to add fuel in the long term, which is bringing the short term back down into a normal range. And so you can see that with our, our ignition, ignition misfire happening right now, we have a total fuel trim of uh, uh, maybe around 9%, 8-9% total fuel trim, and that's positive. So with an ignition misfire, here's what we know so far, um, it does not go negative. So some of the debate out there is, well, an ignition misfire, uh, raw fuel, so people are thinking rich and you think fuel trim is going to go negative. That is not the case. Uh, you cannot make that statement. Uh, when that ignition uh, doesn't fire, we're pumping raw fuel into the exhaust, yes, but raw fuel does not equal rich. It's unburned. We're also not burning the oxygen. So you can see that with an ignition misfire, essentially, these fuel trim numbers are pretty much useless. Um, these, if you looked at this by itself, and this car came in with an ignition misfire, these wouldn't help me at all because they look pretty normal. The car's got a misfire. How is this giving you any direction at all? I'm not sure. I mean, maybe you could say, possibly, that the type of misfire that we have is ignition related, but it could also be compression too because compression is going to do the same thing as far as pumping raw fuel unburned into the exhaust. So ignition misfire, I'm going to plug this coil back in. Let these numbers stabilize for a second. And then we'll do the fuel injector next. Okay, we let the numbers stabilize. We're going to do the injector now. I'm going to unplug an injector. And again, we're looking at short-term, long-term fuel trim. Just looking at it on bank two. That's the uh, side of the engine that we're disabling the spark and fuel. Do the injector now. This is now a no fuel misfire. As you can see, we, what well, we would expect for it to go rich, compensate rich. And it certainly had to go more rich in reaction to this injector misfire than it did the ignition misfire. But both ignition and injector misfires that fuel trim went positive. A lot more positive on the fuel injector. Um, I think one of the ways that we can uh, maybe justify this is if you're not spraying the fuel in that cylinder, then you're not taking up that space and there's going to be more oxygen coming into that cylinder than there would be if the fuel was there. So that would be one way we could explain the higher percentage number. Um, another way would be uh, with a fuel, or I'm sorry, with an uh, an ignition misfire, we're pumping fresh oxygen and fresh gas, raw fuel, into the exhaust and some of that can actually ignite in the exhaust manifold and we can use up some of that available oxygen in that process in a hot manifold. I think both of those would explain why this is so much higher with a injector misfire as opposed to an ignition misfire. Um, but in either case, here's what we know, with both misfires, 
the fuel trim command is going to go positive. As you can see, certainly more positive with a no fuel misfire as in this picture. So maybe this might be some valuable information. Uh, if you bring a car in and it has a dead miss and you see very positive fuel trim numbers, maybe we lean more toward the injector than we would uh, ignition. So not discrediting this test by any means. But what I'm trying to uh, uh, clarify is that an ignition misfire will not drive the fuel trim negative. I know we want to think raw fuel is rich, but we can't do that. Uh, we're not burning the air in that cylinder either, so it's gonna, that O2 is going to read lean either way. The only thing though about this would be you could plug in something else that would cause this, and that would be an intake manifold runner gasket. If that gasket was leaking, uh, and I can't simulate that, but certainly that's going to drive your fuel trim positive and give you a single cylinder misfire. So does this always say, hey, you got a bad injector? No, it doesn't, but it's certainly more positive than an ignition or compression would be. Um, the reason you're seeing this drop down right now, a little fuel trim uh, review here, what's the long term doing? Long term's correcting, trying to bring this short term back down to zero. That's what you just saw occur right there, um, and that's why that sudden change. But it, uh, that's our injector misfire. Um, what I want to do before we conclude this, uh, this vehicle is a wideband. O2. And so what I want to do is the same process on a narrow band O2 car and see if we get the same kind of reactions. Okay, this is our second car. We're going to try to prove this theory a little bit better. Uh, this is a 2004 uh, Dodge Neon. This is a narrow band sensor as opposed to that Lexus that was a wide band. Uh, one of the things you see right away, the way the short term fuel trim um, adapts, there's a lot bigger swing in this uh, Ridge Lean command on that short term. Kind of interesting. Uh, we definitely need to do some wide band, narrow band O2 stuff. We'll be doing that in the future, so keep watching. But um, So different car. We want to see the reaction again. I'm going to go ignition first, and we're going to look um, at the reaction of this with an ignition misfire. Uh, let's do one thing before we do this. Reset our min-max for me here real quick. And now we can use these scales. And of course, these look a lot bigger when we do that because this is a self-updating min-max scale. I'm going to go ahead and sort the ignition. Uh, this is a waste spark. I'm just going to sort one plug wire out. This will be cylinder number two. Not that it matters. Okay, that cylinder two sorted out. Looks like we hit a max of 7.8 on the fuel trim, so we see again right away an ignition misfire that uh, has caused a lean condition even though you're pumping raw fuel into the exhaust, you're not burning the oxygen either, so that O2 is picking up a lean condition, ignition misfire. So that right away is going to make the argument that you know a, an ignition misfire is going to drive the fuel trim negative, that is a false statement. Absolutely going positive, and I'm, I'm telling you guys from my experience what I've seen, severe ignition misfires will drive your O2 really lean and your fuel trim is very positive, so keep that in mind. In fact, if you look in, uh, in my book, Section 5, we talked about this. Uh, one of the cases of uh, a lean condition or positive fuel trim numbers is a misfire. Um, and I have severe misfire listed as a false lean. It's really not a lean condition. The O2 is seeing extra oxygen from that misfire. So again, ignition misfire, looking at about 9.6% 9, 9 was the peak of that, but you can see we're more positive than we were before. I'm going to plug this plug wire back in. We're going to let these numbers stabilize for a second, and then we're going to do the uh, injector one. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with where we are. That was pretty fast correction, a lot faster than the other car. We're back to a more stable range. And a little bit of changes here. I'm going to give it a second. All right, I'm going to unplug the injector now. Same cylinder, fuel injector, I'm going to unplug it. 
certainly a lot higher, just like our other car, but now we got an issue. And the issue is, pause this for me. Oh, me? Are you still rolling? Mike, pause the screen. Back this up, grab this cursor, yeah, bring this back over. I want to pull this back on the screen. Right there, okay. Um, don't shut the car off, because we'll lose our data. In this picture, we have an issue, and our issue is that we were in closed loop, and I unplugged the injector, and as this is climbing up, right at this point, my short term was about 20%, so clearly, like the other car, more lean than our ignition misfire was. But what happened is it went from closed loop to open loop. So move your cursor, Mike, over to, to this point, right to where it switched, right to where, from where we dropped. Other way. Right, right to this point right here. Watch this line, watch this right here. We, we went to open loop. So when you're in open loop, fuel trim is disabled and the, this computer as a default with a fuel injector unplugged, it's recognizing that by its output state monitor that's watching the injector voltage. It knows there's a problem, dropped it into open loop, and so that makes this test invalid with a open in the electrical part of the injector. Now, I'm not saying that that's always gonna happen because you can have an injector that's still electrically firing and this would not happen if it was plugged up. But in this case, with, with an electrical problem with the injector, we're running in open loop and so we can't use fuel trim again. Um, I just think that there's too many variables with fuel trim as far as using it to determine the type of misfire that you have. Is, is it showing us more of a rich correction with an injector problem on both vehicles? And I think the answer is yes. So there would be some value to this, uh, but using it to say and pinpoint the type of misfire that you have, I, I really don't think it's, it's accurate enough to be able to do that. So fuel trim, misfire, that's what we got.